Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video I'm going to run through with you types of beaches and as always there's a link in the description box below for a worksheet you can complete while watching this video to help you with your home learning or to create your revision notes. So let's start off first of all by thinking about what is a beach. So a beach is a landform of what we call coastal deposition, the dropping off of material that lies between something known as high tide and low tide. Now beaches are found on coasts, like I said, between high and low tide lines. And most beaches are formed of sand or shingle, and some people refer to shingle as pebbles, and if they're not formed by sand or shingle, they're usually made up of mud and silt, very fine particles and sediment. So I want to first of all introduce you to the concept of a beach profile. So a beach profile shows what we call the gradient, the sloping angle from the back of the beach to the sea. Now, if you're working on the worksheet, there's space for you to actually draw a very simple version of a beach profile that I'm about to go through now. So when we have our coastline, we know that a coastline is when the land meets the sea and we will have what we call low tide and high tide levels. So when we have a low tide, that means the sea is much further out and not of a close proximity towards our coastline. Whereas your high tide line is usually experienced when we have those high waves approaching the coastline and therefore the sea is closer to the coastline where the land meets the sea. Now, the back shore is what we would refer to as the back of the beach, but the foreshore is what we would call the front of the coastline. Typically, this is where the high tide line would always come up to. You might also hear the term offshore, and offshore obviously means off the coast, so you're not on the land anymore, and you are obviously in the sea area, and that is known as your offshore section. So like I said, this is a very quick diagram of a beach profile. Now your beach profile can potentially change in gradient seasonally, and this is all due to the types of waves that are experienced along our coastline. And if you haven't watched my previous video on types of waves, I'll put the link in the description box below. Let's then start to think about the differences between your different types of beaches. So, as I said before, a beach is a landform of coastal deposition, lying between that high and low tide level. And I'm going to go through two types of beaches with you today. I'm going to go through a sand beach and a pebble beach. So we're going to start with a pebble beach. Now pebble beaches consist of larger sized sediment. So your pebbles and your stones. Now in your back shore area of these particular beaches, your pebbles will be of a larger size compared to those that are present on your foreshore in the front area of your beach. So typically in geography, we might investigate how sediment changes as we move further inland on our coastline. And what we typically notice is that the pebbles are smaller on the foreshore, the front of the coastline, and then they increase in size as they get to the back shore area, the back of the coastline. Now, pebble beaches are typically narrow, but can also be quite steep. And this is because these types of beaches are more often than not exposed to destructive waves. And what this means is, is that the pebbles are not moved far up the beach because destructive waves are known for having a very strong backwash and therefore they're more likely to take sediment away from the beach and erode the beach and this effectively makes the beach profile very steep. On the other hand we've got sand beaches and sand beaches are typically made up of smaller finer sand and clay particles. These types of beaches are typically flat but very wide and this is because they experience a lot of low energy constructive waves 
and those constructive waves will transport material on to the coastline through the process of swash and in our constructive waves swash is a lot stronger than our backwash so the sediment is slowly and constantly deposited onto the coastline on your foreshore and backshore area. Now once the tide has gone out there is more material on the beach than before so we have an increased net sediment budget we call it. So because we have constructive waves being experienced on our sandy beaches this is why they are very wide but typically flat but very vast because we've got that constant supply of sediment coming in. So as always everyone I hope you found this video useful like and subscribe if you did and I'll see you next time.